Hi, everyone. Hold on to your horses and tighten up your britches. Today, I have yet another set of shocking stories that are sure to make your head spin. You might even learn the truth about something that makes it impossible for you to sleep tonight. So get yourself comfortable, grab your favorite drink, and cozy up with that subscribe button. Thanks. Now let's get into the stories. I've been listening to your show for a while, and I appreciate the open-mindedness and the platform you offer for folks like us to relay our experiences. A fan from Texas here. I live in Houston, but I love going down to Galveston to the creeks, where I do my fishing. One particular spot is always my favorite. The water is chill, and the place is usually quiet, except for the critters scampering about. Perfect for me and my dog, Duke. Duke's an energetic old Labrador. You know, one of those dogs that's silly most of the time, but he definitely gets serious about these fishing trips. It's as if he regards them as some kind of a mission. Anyway, it was a sunny weekend about a year or so ago when this strange occurrence happened to us. It had me scratching my head, and I'm sure you will be interested to hear about it. I got to the creek and immediately set up my tackle. I remember Duke was off doing his own thing that day, sniffing around, digging holes, you could tell he was having a hell of a time himself. We had been there since early morning, and it was heading into the afternoon now. My line was set out in the water, and it was a cool stillness until, out of nowhere, I felt it all shift. Startled, I opened my eyes thinking I hooked a big one, but my line was stable. I laughed it off, thinking it was just my imagination, until I noticed Duke. His behavior changed. He was growling at something in the bushes and not in a playful way, but a deep, primal growl. Duke's little threats to the passing raccoons or possums always made me chuckle. But this was different. There was something about his growl and the way his body stiffened that had me on alert. He was as still as stone, except for his tail, which was whipping in wide arcs behind him, a sure sign that he was agitated. I remember thinking it was odd behavior for him. Right then, he was acting like he was defending me from something... What is it, Duke? I asked him, but he didn't take his eyes off of the bushes on the other side of the creek. Then I felt it, a sensation like electricity, like the static in the air before a thunderstorm. There was definitely something there, something that didn't belong. No sounds, no rustles or telltale crack of twigs, just an eerie silence, the same silence you could hear your heart beat to. There was some other presence there, couldn't see it, couldn't hear it, it was just this strong sensation washing over me like cold water. If I said I wasn't terrified, I'd be lying. But Duke and I stood our ground. We heard a loud splash breaking the silence like a clap of thunder. But when I looked to where the sound came from, there was nothing there. No ripples in the water, no sign of an animal or even a fish. Just my bobber sitting there quietly bobbing along. It was almost like the sound was out of place. Like it wasn't meant to happen. And that's when things took a turn for the bizarre. I noticed a strange movement from the corner of my eye. Spinning around to have a good look, I first assumed that maybe there was a large bird or something perched nearby. But I was wrong, terribly wrong. I was faced with a hulking humanoid entity standing upright on two legs, a sight I'd never thought I'd witness in my life. It looked to be around eight feet tall, tall enough to tower over even the height of some basketball players. But unlike them, there was nothing human about it. It was as though a dinosaur roamed out of Jurassic Park and was standing in front of me. I know it sounds crazy, but that's the best way I can describe it. It had fearsome eyes, large and piercing, a distinct yellow color that sent a chill down my spine. I saw long, black claws on its feet and arms that could probably shred anything to bits. Now, I don't know who was more shocked, me or the creature. For a split second that felt like infinity, we held our gaze, locked in this intense moment. Duke kept growling, his threatening snarl breaking the silence around us. The creature flashed a menacing array of teeth from its lizard-like head. Suddenly, Duke sprang forward, lunging towards it, I froze in shock, holding back at his leash. But with an agility I would have never imagined, the creature hissed and fled into the undergrowth, as if it had never been there in the first place. I was left standing there trying to process what had just happened. 
Did we just encounter a prehistoric creature? And how did something so large manage to just disappear like that? My brain was totally unable to comprehend what we had seen. Duke and I swiftly packed up our gear and made our way back home. At that moment, all thoughts of hooking a fish and the tranquility of the creek were the furthest thing from my mind. I still questioned whether it was real or a figment of my imagination. But the intense response that I felt wasn't anything that my brain could have fabricated. I don't go fishing at that spot anymore. Someone else can have it. That place doesn't bring the peace it once did. Instead, just reminds me of that creature. Best to avoid it, I think. So, this happened about two years ago. I live in Juneau, Alaska. It's a little bit of paradise for someone like me who's got a soft spot for the outdoors. You can't beat the views up here, unspoiled by traffic or skyline. Sure, it's cold in winter, but when summer rolls around, I like to grab my backpacking gear and head out into the wilderness. And that's what I was doing when this incident took place. You see, I work a nine to five just like anyone else, and once in a while, I crave something other than the glow of my laptop screen. Nature pulls me in with its mystery and the call of the wild. I can't resist it, and I wouldn't want to. So every June, like clockwork, my city life goes on hold and I head out to explore the valleys of Alaska. That particular day, I woke up at the break of dawn. I remember it was a gorgeous day. Not too hot, and not too cold. I started on my journey stopping by the local diner for a quick bite, getting those last bits of civilization and good hot food. But still I couldn't wait to ditch the everyday monotony for that adrenaline-filled survivalist lifestyle, if only for a couple of days. As I headed out through the outskirts of the city, the chatter of city life started to fade into the distance. The pulsating cityscape was replaced by the harmonious symphony of nature. Continuing my expedition, I set up camp at the banks of the Mendenhall Glacier Lake. The sun reflected off the surface of the shimmering waters. The next few days were typical as far as backpacking goes. There's always something minor that goes wrong, but you get through it. It was the fourth day of my trip. I turned in early that night. My muscles ached, and I wanted to rest up before beginning the last leg of my journey. Sleep came easily, the lingering scent of pine and wood smoke lulling me into a slumber. But somewhere in the middle of the night, something woke me up. It wasn't a dream. I was sure of that. I jolted up suddenly, but was met with dead silence. It was so quiet I could practically hear my heart pounding against my ribs. Stepping out of my tent, I felt a strange sensation, like the woods were holding their breath. That's when I saw the tracks right by my fire pit. They were big and broad, almost human-like, but much larger. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up, a shiver running down my spine. I've come across many animals, but those tracks belong to no creature I've ever known. It gave me a hollow, sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach. I decided to follow the tracks. Like I said, I'm naturally curious. The fear was there, lurking at the back of my mind, but the unfamiliar just lured me in. And boy, I'll never forget what I saw in that moonlit clearing. There was this creature, some seven or eight feet tall. It was massive, built like a linebacker with wide shoulders and an apparent absence of a neck, completely covered by thick, dark brown hair. But it wasn't a bear. I've seen enough of those to know the difference. Hell, its silhouette was more human than beast, but it was just larger. It was crouched, its back towards me, busy doing something. I think it was eating, but I'm not really sure. There was this intense smell, musty mixed with a wet dog stench that I couldn't ignore. On any other day, I would have assumed it was a lingering scent from a dump site, but there was nothing like that around. Then it tilted its head, suddenly alert. I like to think that I'm pretty good at keeping quiet in the wilderness, but this creature clearly knew something was amiss. I went still as it turned around. It had a heavy set brow large black eyes, and the strong, pronounced lips of an ape. Its face was startlingly hairless in contrast to its body. Its nose was bristled, and it bore an uncanny resemblance to a Neanderthal or an early human's face, like some variant of us that time forgot. Then came a sound, low first, 
gradually getting louder, a weird growl that seemed to vibrate in the air around me. It echoed in the quiet night, a sound that I can still hear to this day when it's too quiet. By instinct, I ducked behind a tree, my heart hammering in my chest. But when I dared to peek again, it was gone, leaving behind only those giant footprints. I instantly retreated back to my tent. When daylight finally broke, I found myself questioning, was it real? Or was it a product of the wilderness playing tricks on my mind? And if so, then what made those eerily human-shaped tracks? But every time my doubts crept in, I replayed the creature's growl in my mind. It's been two years, but that encounter still haunts me every single day. Was it the legendary Sasquatch? I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Whatever it was, it was a stark reminder that we aren't alone when we venture into the wilderness. So, I have a real doozy of a story for you. This happened a couple of years ago on the outskirts of Santa Cruz, California. I loved that place. Notice I said loved in the past tense. It is filled with beautiful redwoods, the scent of eucalyptus, and the sea in the far distance. It was the perfect place to lose yourself for a day or so. Perfect for a die-hard geocacher like me. Now, for those who aren't familiar, geocaching is much like a global game of hide-and-seek. People stash trinkets or notes or whatnot in waterproof containers and log the coordinates online for others to find. It's all about the thrill of the find. Nothing harvests a sense of adventure like hunting for hidden treasures. It was a warm, sunny day, an ideal day for ticking new caches off my list. I had selected a seemingly challenging geocache nestled in the woods bordering the city. I was way off the beaten path, and that's just how I liked it. I made my way there with my GPS in hand, feeling certain I was in for a good day. As I got deeper into the woods, I started feeling this strange, ominous kind of vibe. Do you ever get that feeling? Like that tingling sensation in your spine, that feeling of being watched? It was getting stronger as I moved deeper into the woods. I was trying to focus on the coordinates on my GPS while I felt that eerie sensation, but I brushed it off. Guess I was just too excited about finding that cache to really pay attention to that creeping feeling. So, I kept going. The cache took me into a clearing. I was pretty sure I had hit the jackpot as my GPS chimed, indicating I was close. Excitement bubbled up inside me as I tried to shake off the creeping unease. But then, it hit me. A smell like I'd never smelled before. A mixture of dampness, something like a wet dog maybe, and an odor that sat heavy in my nose, almost sulfuric. It reminded me of rotten garbage. There was a hint of something metallic in there too, like old blood. It was unsettling to say the least. Suddenly, everything became dead still, not a cricket's chirp or any sounds of the forest. I was afraid I was about to stumble on some decaying carcass with a smell like that in the air. The silence was deafening, almost resonating alongside my rapidly escalating heartbeats. I stood still for a moment, listening, taking stock of the situation unfolding around me. The smell persisted over the otherwise pine-laced fresh air. A cold trickle of sweat rolled down the back of my neck. My stomach churned. Suddenly, I was not so sure about this geocache adventure anymore. Silence was suddenly snatched away by a growl, a sound that seemed to shake the very ground beneath me. The noise echoed, and it seemed like it was coming from every direction, making it impossible to pinpoint its source. I looked around, squinting to see through the dense foliage, desperately trying to identify the threat. After a few moments, I noticed an ominous shadow moving in the woods. I squinted, but the details were indistinct. It was large, much larger than any animal native to California, even larger than a black bear. As I watched frozen in equal parts fear and fascination, the silhouette changed. At first, it looked to be a large black wolf, but then it stood up. And I'm talking, it stood up on two legs like a man. I stood there, sweating, staring into the darkness of the forest around me, straining my eyes to make sense of the creature. I couldn't stop looking at it, no matter how much my brain screamed for me to turn tail and run. Standing, the creature must have been almost seven feet tall. 
Its fur was dark, either black or brown. It had the wide shoulders and chest of a wrestler and long, well-muscled, human-like legs, raising it clear off the ground. It had a long snout, like a wolf's. But the eyes were the strangest part, if you can believe that. The eyes were amber-colored like those of a wolf, but they had a distinctly human quality to them. There was an intelligence behind those eyes that unsettled me to my core. I could see its fangs, a clear double row when it growled. It clearly didn't want me there. I think it was giving me a warning that I had invaded its territory. If it were simply on the hunt, I don't imagine I would hear or see it at all. No, it was trying to intimidate me to get me to leave. And it was working. I did the only sensible thing I could think to do in that situation. I turned and ran. The geocache was now the furthest thing from my mind. I could hear the creature behind me, its movement much faster than any ordinary dog, but I didn't dare look back. It was all about survival at that point. Eventually, I saw my car at the edge of the woods. A surge of relief washed over me as I practically leapt inside and locked the doors. I drove away as fast as I could, abandoning the idea of the geocache and trying to forget my experience with the creature. It was something out of a nightmarish folklore or a Stephen King novel. They call it the Dogman in some circles. Only we, the fortunate or maybe unfortunate ones who have locked eyes with it, know that the tales are more than just legends. As I sit here writing this, the sensation of that day is still vivid in my mind. It's made me more careful of my ventures into the wild. Have you ever been out in pure darkness? And I'm not talking city darkness where there's always some streetlight messing up your night vision. I'm talking about true midnight. When you're miles from people and civilization, that kind of darkness... That's the darkness of Yosemite National Park at night. A few years back, I used to take long walks there, just me under the black velvet of the night sky dotted with more stars than you can ever count. I know, sounds kind of creepy to some, but I grew up around woods and fields, so being out on a night like that feels like home. There's something about the pure solitude and the primal bit of fear it stirs up that makes you feel more alive. I think it makes the senses sharper too, reminding you that you're part of nature, not just an observer. On this particular night, I went for my usual late night stroll in the park. The moon was big and hanging low in the sky, bathing Yosemite Valley in an eerie silver glow. There's something really beautiful about moonlight, the way it drapes everything in soft silver and blue. I started near the northern edge of the park. I remember slipping on my hiking boots and grabbing my flashlight although I hardly ever had to switch it on. I headed off under the tall, black silhouettes of the giant sequoias. But truth be told, the whole stroll didn't feel right from the start. You know that tingle you get sometimes, like an itch in a spot you can't scratch? It was that kind of feeling. Maybe it was the way the moonlight was reflecting off the lake, or was it the way the night felt quieter than normal? I can't say for sure. I brushed off the feeling and continued on walking along a narrow path skirting around a cliffside. There was a steep drop on my left and a wall of rock on my right. And then I hear something in the distance, an odd, softly echo, kind of clicking sound. Now, I've heard all sorts of critters making all sorts of noises, but this was different. Not so much the click, click, click rhythm of it, but it was the quality, I guess. It had a strange, hollow, and almost chiming sound. I stopped and listened. It was getting louder, seemingly alternating between the left and right of me. So I did something I almost never do. I switched on my flashlight. That's when I saw these strange marks on the ground. The pale beam of my flashlight played over the dust and the pine needles, and there they were, these long, dragging marks, like something had been crawling along the path. They were fresh, too. The dust was still settling. Now, I'd tracked all sorts of animals, but these tracks were something else, erratic and just plain wrong for any type of creature that lived in the area. I followed the marks, my unease growing with every step. Suddenly, the rustle of dry leaves under my boots seemed to grow louder. I stopped mid-step, a drop of cold sweat sliding down my back. 
You know how in those Predator movies, everything goes quiet before the beast shows up? That's exactly how it felt. I was being watched. I was sure of it now, but I couldn't see anything past the puny circle of light from the beam of my flashlight. The once comforting moonlight now cast long, alien shadows that seemed to play tricks on my eyes. Then, out of nowhere, I caught sight of something in the periphery of the flashlight's glow. Whatever it was, it was darting between the trees. It was so fast that I couldn't make out what it was at first. But then it slowed, almost as if it had stopped to watch me. The sight of it was terrifying. Almost human, but not quite. This thing was naked and pale. It was as if it was made from moonlight. It was on all fours, skittering and crawling, its joints bending all the wrong ways. Its elongated form was almost fluid in movement, and it spanned a height that I guess was about five feet when stretched out. The body was gaunt, almost skeletal, with every vertebrae showing under the tight, stretched skin. It gave off a strange clicking noise, like teeth chattering. That was the noise I had been hearing earlier. The sound was echoing around the canyon. Then it turned its head, and I saw its face. Two hollow voids where eyes should be, pitch black against its pallid face. No nose, just a wide, gaping mouth that looked like a yawning chasm in its skull. Before I could react, it lunged towards me, quick as a flash. Panicked, I stumbled back, nearly dropping my flashlight as I turned and ran the way I came, stumbling over roots and blindly crashing through the undergrowth. Thankfully, I was close enough to the head of the trail that I managed to make it back to my car while the creature, whatever it was, didn't seem to follow me past the tree line. To this day, I don't know what the hell that thing was. I've gone over that night in my head a hundred times, trying to rationalize it. It was too big for any nocturnal critter I know, too fast for a prankster in a suit, and way too real to be a hallucination. I guess some things aren't meant to be explained, but it's given me a real respect for the darkness and those quiet little corners of the world where the wild things lurk. So, I've hesitated to share this story because it sounds insane even to me, despite having lived it. This occurred back in 2009 in the deserts of Afghanistan. It was my third tour there, not that the number mattered. It was weird. I got so used to the erratic routine out there that I almost dreaded coming home between tours. But there was one incident out there that shook me straight to my core. I don't talk about it too often because it sounds completely insane. But I figure if anyone out there is going to believe me, it is likely you. The desert does something to your sense of time. It brings an eerie rhythm that demands you to get lost within it. Day after day, activities revolved around a cycle that was painfully repetitive. We got up before the first slivers of daylight, had a quick breakfast of sand-infused rations, and drank barely lukewarm coffee. It was hours upon hours of nothing interfused with brief moments of heart-stopping action, and then back to the quiet nothingness that made up the majority of our days. Then the grunt work would follow. Hoisting supplies, maintaining the base, checking and rechecking equipment, hours were spent in the monotony. The desert, though oppressive, slowly starts taking on a comforting familiarity. You start to ignore the heat of the day. Then came the evenings, my downtime. That's when I would sit with my back against the cold tin walls of the barracks, writing letters home, trying my best to pen down sentences that made me sound like I was cheerier than I felt. This unending cycle between humdrum activity and interpersonal connection became my reality. This day was just like any other. At least, it started that way. We'd worked the morning routine, fortifying camp parameters, attending to lookout duties, and even had time for a quick game of poker in the late afternoon. By the time dusk fell, I found myself by a small ridge just a few hundred feet from our barracks. It was a spot I frequented more often than not. You could see miles of the barren desert with nothing but rolling dunes in front of you. As far as war zones went, it had a certain tranquil charm to it. I remember thinking, as I often did, about the strange mix of this place. A deathly beautiful wilderness that held an untold number of hidden dangers, not the least of which were IEDs, sniper fire, and nighttime raids. That night, 
An uncanny stillness hung heavy, like the quiet before a storm. My senses registered the uneasy calm, and yet I couldn't quite put my finger on what felt so off. Unsettled, I brushed it off to the strain of duty and missing home. When I was home, I felt awkward there, almost alien, but out here I missed it more than I can explain in words. As darkness started to creep in, I decided to head back to the barracks. But as I turned to leave, a sudden chill swept across, raising a layer of goosebumps across my arms. I remember feeling my gut clench up. My mind was automatically sifting through the list of natural desert predators, but something was telling me this was different. In the inky darkness, my eyes spotted movement on the ridge where there should be none. I trained my eyes on the spot, straining to see in the fast-growing darkness. I felt it before I saw it. A gust of freezing wind blew past me and a growl echoed through the barren expanse. I was overcome with an all-encompassing sense of dread. A creature stood there before me, a silhouette against the starry night sky. It was tall and oddly shaped. Its form was humanoid yet not quite right, a distortion in its shadow hinting at an animalistic quality. The moonlight reflected off what could only have been sharp, talon-like claws. A pair of piercing yellow eyes met mine. It stared at me, a predator marking its prey, and I could do nothing but stare back. This was no mere desert animal. This was something that shouldn't belong here. I tried to be as quiet as possible and started to back away. As I was moving slowly backwards, I tripped over an unseen rock and fell. The creature before me was startled. It let out a loud shriek and fled. But when it did, I caught a glimpse of its true form. It looked like a, and I don't have any good way to say this, but it looked like a dinosaur. I didn't see it up close, but I got a decent look at its body. The face and neck resembled that of a lizard, but it had the ability to walk upright. There are no animals out here that fit that description. In fact, there are no animals that fit that description outside of a museum of fossils and bones. I can't explain what I saw. It was as if it dissolved into the night air, leaving behind nothing but the chill of its presence and an empty desert landscape. My heartbeat thundered in my ears as I got back up on shaky legs. I forced myself to move, to run back to the safety of the barracks, yet the scene replayed in my mind with every pounding heartbeat. I woke up my superior and told him my tale, but I was met with jokes and ridicule. I know it sounded unbelievable, but I know what I saw. It wasn't a desert hallucination at all. There was definitely some type of dinosaur out there. They told me it must be the heat or the stress that made me hallucinate the creature, that I probably mistook some natural animal and let my imagination get the best of me. But since that encounter, I'm acutely aware that there are creatures out there in the unforgiving, wild places in the world that we might not know about, or for that matter, want to know about. <laughs>